What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself, where we change lives through volleyball, training, and inspirational content. Welcome to my Volleyball Coach Reaction to Season 3, Episode 9. If you're new to this channel, I'm a volleyball coach, volleyball player, and personal trainer who provides volleyball tutorials, jump training workouts, and other cool volleyball videos. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more content. Thanks to all the fans who voted for the nine video editor and graphic designers that I'm currently interviewing. Even though I'm not basing my decision solely on those votes, it does help to have your perspective and your comments, especially since you guys are the ones that are actually watching these videos. I know many of you recommended that I watch both episode nine and 10 together, but unfortunately I just don't have the time to do all that because that does double the editing and I know many of you are willing to wait two weeks for the next Haikyuu episode, but I really have to spend all my time making sure I finalize my decision on choosing the next video editor because that's going to save me a lot of time and I want to get on that right away. I appreciate the background info behind the passing of Coach Ukai's voice actor. That's really tragic and I'm sure I'm going to hear a difference and it's going to take me a while to get used to him because the original voice actor was so good to have that grit and gruffiness in his voice. I'm glad that one of the last lines that voice actor spoke was a truly inspirational quote for all of us. I've been meaning to do a video trying to do some of those halftime scenes of serving at the water bottle. Hopefully once I actually get a video editor, I'll have more time to make more interesting videos like that. I appreciate all the notes that you've given me, such as keeping an eye out for the extra scene, at the end of episode 10 and also a link to the other OVA episodes. You guys have truly made watching Haikyuu such an enjoyable experience, so thank you again for that. If you've been enjoying my videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon where you receive exclusive access to my monthly live Q&A sessions, my monthly podcasts, my private blog, behind the scenes footage, and more. Now let's get this Haikyuu party started. That intense house music for the the recap. Got that aura rising from Ushijima. Inato senses that from him. That competitive energy to want to dominate anything that stands in your way. Oh, that's right, Shiratori Zawa's up by one point. And then the entrance of Tsuki, the swag jog. I'm personally not a fan of this new intro song. I like the Kobe Fly. I like that one a lot more. Am I the only one? Let me know in the comments which intro song you like better. The Volleyball Idiots. That's got to be Hinata and Kageyama. Oh, this is probably where they rewinded it to for Zuki, uh, older brother in there. The flashbacks are, of course, to the training camp. This is where we got that seed planted of where volleyball will finally click for him. Line up with a dominant hand. Good advice. Hey. Everyone's got such a unique sound. I love these flashbacks. That's good. That's all you can think about as he's getting taped up. And getting taped up after your finger is already injured is really painful. Because you don't have the adrenaline pumping anymore. All you feel is someone trying to twist your fingers to get it in place. Zuki! Zuki! And then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on. That's probably the music that should be playing when Suki runs in. <laughs> Dislocated. 
Ah, I didn't know it was that bad. I thought it was just like a ripped web or something. Yes, when a player says, put me in, coach, that's hard to turn down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, luckily that's that's a buddy tape or a show on this side. I don't think you see beyond the animation. He is ready, but every time the ball is going to hit that pinky, it's going to hurt like hell. Wow, Tsuki said thanks for your honesty. Tsuki thanked somebody for something? Jump float All right. The reason why Daichi is saying to take a step up when someone's about to jump float is because it's a lot easier, at least in men's volleyball, to take a jump float with your hands. And also because the ball is not moving as fast as a jump serve and doesn't usually have as much power, you step up to prioritize your hands. And, and if it is deeper, because it's not as fast as a jump serve, you have time to move back. So that's a very common strategy for men's volleyball. You don't see it as much as in women's volleyball because the net is lower. And yes, the athletes are shorter, but the angle is so flat that you actually can't use your hands very often uh, when you're passing a float serve. So that's why you see a lot of girls players mainly use their platforms because with a low net, with similar height athletes, it's it's driving super flat and you won't even be able to use your hands very often. Ooh, Asahi will serve next. He has a chance to get him back in the game. This guy's gonna miss. Oh. Right, she gets behind it. Good pass. Yeah, Daichi just is the glue of the team. Ooh, Tanaka's going for a quick set. Wow, gets a naked dump. That's clean. He's staying ahead. So Tendo did read him, but because he's a middle, he's not. He's usually going to be lined up with the middle and not the setter. Actually, that was the setter's ball to get closer and block the dump there. But it's interesting that Kageyama's already thinking, okay, that dump worked, but he saw that Tendo read him, which means if he tries to do it again, Tendo's gonna be all over that. So that's good thinking, and this goes back to my original philosophy of whichever team makes the last adaptation is the one that wins the game. So Kageyama doesn't wanna let Shiro Toizawa have a chance to adapt to his dump, so he's already trying to stay one step ahead of the opponent. Really smart thinking from Kageyama here. 15-15. This is intense, man. The dump on game point. That's pretty ballsy from Kageyama. Oh, Tsuki coming in. Oh, actually, that was not Tanaka. He just had a ball of head. That was the, the backup middle. <laughs> He held it down. He kept the game alive. Mm, good encouragement from Coach Ukai. <laughs> right, right down to business. And Suki gave him some advice. Counter attack. Man, that is inspirational. Even if Tsuki is not 100%, knowing that one of your teammates just came back from an injury to come help the team, that's inspiring for everybody else. Mm, for once, they're in agreement. I want to watch that again. I doubt you would, but you don't need to hold back. If you don't think I'm going to, then don't say it, and I won't. Haha, <laughs> little anime smirk. Flashback from their training. Yeah, I love it. He's saying, I will single handedly finish the game, so how willing are you to just take that risk on me? That's a leader right there. But we got one of Karasuno's best leaders, or servers, sorry. 
This is great. I've been pausing a lot for this one. I don't know who's thinking this. I'm, I'm assuming Daichi because he's probably the one where you can hear the voice in his head. He's saying that no one's looking this way would be so reassuring. I'm assuming he's talking about looking at your own team's server. This is what it means to be fully dialed in on the next play or the next ball. There's no benefit from looking at the person who's serving. You need to look forward and immediately anticipate where the pass is, what the setter's doing, and what your hitter's doing. If you look at your server, all you're doing is waiting if the ball's gonna be served in or not, and you have no impact on that, right? Serving is completely up to the server, and you just gotta focus on doing your job right away. <laughs> Oh, I see what he's saying. I think this is Asahi saying that because no one's looking this way, that means they have full confidence in him that he's going to make a serve and they are already preparing for the next move. So that's great. Yeah, see, all these little body language cues make a big, big difference in instilling confidence in your teammates. Look at the wrinkles here on the bottom of each of their jerseys from Tanaka, Kakeyama, and Suki. How it folds and every shadow is bending in a different way. That's, that's a lot of effort. And then doing the wrinkles over the actual jersey numbers, that's really hard because you can't just draw a simple number. The numbers also have to curve in the design of the wrinkles there. And then you have to do different, two different types of gray. Right, the, the dark gray of the shadow will look different on the black of the jersey as it does on the white of the jersey. That's that's a lot of extra effort. I toss it from Asahi. Good pass from Shiro Toizawa. Leon. Now he's gonna say that Ushiwaka because Ushiwaka is demanding it. We're gonna triple block because Suki said so. They're set up and they're ready with a broken hand. Oh, he aims for it. Nat's gotta hurt like crazy. Ushiwaka has no mercy. <laughs> now he's downing himself because it hurts. But is he gonna get inspired now that the team's gonna have his back? Yeah, even, even K-pop notices the change of Suki. Oh no, they have the free ball over. Because they're going to set Ushijima again. Time difference. They're going to wait. And now Nishinoya is going to dig him. Just like the game plan. Oh, Oh, he was helping to knock with the blocking. Ooh, soft block here. Good turnaround, dig. Wow, even Suki is thinking Moikai. Now he's going to put this one away. Look at that determination graphic. When you're tired of the third swing. <laughs> That's right, the determination to finish the rally. Oh, Tsuki is running the back one slide. Slide. Ah, oh, Tendo. Look at those instincts from Tendo. One and a half lockers. Can Tanaka sneak it through? Yes, he can in the seam. Ah, oh, Tsuki. What a hero in that play. Wow. That is amazing. I thought Ushijima was going to finish that for sure. Let's appreciate everything that Tsuki did during that whole play. First coming in with an injured finger, and then soft blocking Ushijima for, for the first one. And even though they had to send a free ball, Ushijima had to hit again. And I think he gets another soft block. And then that one, Tsuki changes the strategy to, I think, jump earlier to force Ushijima to hit down the line towards Nishinoya. Nishinoya digs for another opportunity, and then they send the ball over again. Sa Asahi gets a chance to hit soft block, and they set Ushijima again, and that third time in a row, even though you want to crush it, your legs are gonna be tired. So Ushijima end up jumping lower or swinging lower, so it hit off the tape, and Suki works hard in transition, 
tries to run the slide. Some of you might be thinking, why would Suki run a slide in this instance, even though he never ran it in practice? The whole point of a middle is not only to block and to hit, but to be the decoy. So if he can make the blockers hesitate or distract them just for a moment, he's gonna make them late. And that's exactly what he did to Tendo. He made him look at Tsuki for a moment to have to decide, should I block Tsuki or should I block the outside? And by the time he processed that, Tendo's instincts finally kicked in, but they were delayed, so he was late to blocking Tanaka, giving Tanaka one and a half blockers to hit against, and he was able to squeeze it right in the seam. So Tanaka was the one that put the ball away, but Tsuki was the one that earned the opportunities for the team to finish the point. And everyone's excited, that's right. And now Karasuna's up by one point. Man, this is intense. Let's see if Uchijima's more, even more pissed off. Ooh, timeout from Coach Eyebrows. I really like the extra commentary from Seijo's team. Poster gonna be beating up Suki to join the moment and Coach Ukai needs to calm them down because they got one more point. It's very insightful. Karasuna has nothing to lose because they were already a weak team. So they had to diversify and experiment with different things. And now it's working to their advantage because they've been working on those crazy things for the entire season. Why is he calling a crappy guy? Oh, squeezing the water bottle. I wonder if, if Ushijima just learned how to tip and roll shot more because everyone's backed up due to his power, he could get a couple more kills and save his strength. By the way, to run an offense that fast, you need a very, very good setter. I mean, Karasuno is going to be a little less tired because their offense is more diversified, but they have to work harder on defense, so it might be a wash. Let's see what o Coach Ukai is going to do for strategy. Let's see what the setter says. <laughs> honest question from the setter, are you still capable? I wonder what Ushijima meant by that. Maybe he acknowledged that, yeah, I didn't put the ball away, so use someone else who can get a kill. Love this. We are a team and that's why we are strong, not because we have individual good athletes. Dang, both teams use both timeouts. Oh, we have the audience. We have the former Karsuno alumni serving now. That's cute. <laughs> I love how she's squishing her face with her boobs. <laughs> I don't know if you ever see, if you would ever see that in an American cartoon. Is that another jump spin from Asahi? Hard spin serve. Oh, just out. Oh, lucky. That sucks. I've done that before, but you gotta go for it to try to finish the game. Oh, Ushijima on the line. Darn. Well, 
lost the power for a hit there. You get that tell based on the graphic. Are they gonna call it in? Oh, called it out. That's a good line judge. By the way, it's very rare to even have good line judges like this that actually make good, honest calls. Especially in high school. Very rare. Yeah, if they serve it too easy, then the other team can set up the offense and get in a good rhythm and immediately side out. At least this is the case for high level, higher level volleyball. So you definitely want to serve tough to force a bad pass and then earn a free ball pass. Set up your offense and kill it in transition. That's the goal. Especially when at the end of the game, you got to take some risks to be more aggressive. The most aggressive team usually is going to end up on top and it's going to win. Now Ushijima's in the back row. Leon takes it. Oh, they go to Ushijima again. That's the matchup you want against Hinata. Bigger hitter against smaller blocker. And they're already on the way down. Not good. Oh, he hung in the air. That's the beauty of being tall or jumping high, is you can hit a little bit on the way down and wait for the blockers to go down. He just holds that attack position for a really long time. Wilfredo well, Leon from the Polish national team does this really well. Kind of the hang and bang. Ooh. Well, he looks a little tired. Let's see if his teammates actually try to uplift him and encourage him versus just look at him. He's just pissed at Hinata. Nice out! Yeah, this serve receive has been not very sharp. Naka's yelling for it. Oh, there's that freak quick there. Running the quick set a little bit further off the net. And now the coach is just being stubborn and saying we will win with just power. Both teams sticking to their styles, seeing which one will last longer. Kageyama's ready to serve. Look at that animation. Beautiful. Overpass. Nishinoi is going to get it. Smells like satisfaction. Let's see what Kageyama does. I think Hinata's going to win. The music's getting really intense. Oh, back one. Oh, good read from Tendo. Oh, no. The zombie attack. Damn, that sucks. Man, just when you feel like you have a chance to win. I've been there so many times. I got a really interesting story about our volleyball season this year so make sure you watch to the end because i'm going to show some clips from my volleyball team to show you exactly what's happening in real life IQ. And now he not instead of getting frustrated he's thinking of a way to get around it next time that's good Tanaka with a swing. Oh, wow, he puts that one away. 19-18. Yeah, he's getting tired. I love those little animations where they're starting to move more sluggishly and kind of breathe with their whole body to show how tired they are. Oh, oh no. Is he cramping? You're not the... You're the one with endless energy. Yeah, when you're short. 
No timeouts. Dang. That is tough. I've been there before. Sometimes you just max jump, especially if you're a shorter hitter. And your legs just give out at some point. There are human limitations. Who's gonna get this? Is he not gonna get it? Sometimes you get lucky. I think they're gonna get this point. No! Oh, of course! Nishinoya not giving up. Oh no, but they're gonna hit the overpass. Does he get the second one? Double dig? Is this their chance? Oh, Kageyama with the save! And we got Asahi coming in with the force! Oh, that was such an awesome sequence! Wow, I got goosebumps right now. Can we watch that again? Yes, we can. This is why you got the Liberos on the court coming in with a double dig. Look at that intensity just trying to keep the ball alive. Incredible save. That's real, by the way. I've seen that happen before. And Asahi with that graphic. I think they just reused that animation from when he called Suga's name. Oh, man. Asahi being ready. <laughs> That's right, he is... Daichi might be the foundation, but Nishinoya is the rock. Yes. Inspire your team with your impossible performance. I love it. This is the impact that liberos can make beyond just touching the ball, but hustle plays when everyone's tired. Oh no, he's not deserving. And they're up by one point. I feel like Karasuno's gonna win. The music's just kind of playing in their favor. It's starting to sound more positive every time it's Karasuno's turn. Oh, Tsuki's back in. This is their best blocking front row. That's right. Let's see who they set. Are they gonna set Ushijima again? Oh, Kageyama reading this play ahead of time. Maybe so he can dig the outside hitter from Ushijima down the line. Oh, he hesitated. Oh, but Suki coming in with a broken hand. Hmm, interesting conversation. Isn't that the same thing? Block is a block. <laughs> More advice from the master blocker. Restraint and persistence. But it is also... With another soft block. The block where you laugh last. Let's see what he means by that. Wantache! And Suki coming in super clutch. Yes, to touch it. Let's go back to what that... Okay, now I understand. Great words from Grandpa Ukai. I'm trying to interpret the conversation between Lev and Suki, and they're talking about, you know, which one's better to get a stuff block or to get faked out or something along those lines, just purely talking about just stopping the ball and blocking it. And Kuro, I think that's the older blocker from middle blocker from Nekoma he's saying the blocker that gets to laugh last I'm assuming he meaning he means the middle blocker that can just slow down and touch every single ball those are, are really annoying middle blockers to play against I can handle getting stuff blocked but when there's a middle constantly touching the balls that I spike and slowing it down and getting dug that gets really annoying and you just end up swinging harder and harder and eventually you just end up hitting out or into the net if you get stuff blocked, you just figure out how to hit around it. But if people can just keep slowing it down, yeah, that's that's a good middle. 
メガネ小僧はモールを追うことだけを貫いてきた慣れてきてもおかしくない Tanaka with the set is Asahi hitting. Yes. He must go for it. Oh, is Hinata going for it? Oh, from the back row. And Suki is cheering him on. Oh, of course, this is where it's going to end. I see why you guys want me to watch episode 10. But I can't. I got to watch the interview videos. Here's my immediate reaction to episode 9. This episode reminds me a lot of my libero, Alicia, from the m u r o Catholic girls volleyball team. We were playing James Logan High School, which is the best team in our league, two days ago. And I think during the third set, I noticed she was kind of holding her hand a lot. And then our assistant coach took a look at it, and her hand was swollen. It was thick, and it was red, and it was definitely going to be bruised very soon, but she was still playing through it. So we had to go see the trainer and they just taped it up. And she just got it thick with the tape. And she ended up just hand passing gingerly. You could tell she was kind of babying it. But what's crazy is that she's been struggling with hand passing all season. And only recently did she start to feel more confident. And then on the night where we were playing the best team in our league and she injures her ring finger on her left hand, she has her best. Hand passing, hand digging performance. It was crazy. And that's why I'm saying where HiQ is actually based on a lot of reality because this just happened with us Wednesday. So I'm going to show you some clips of her hand passing performance. <laughs> And believe me when I say this, she, when we first started working with her, even in the beginning of this season, she was very bad at hand passing. Her hand, she just wasn't as strong in her upper body. Her hands were too soft, so she's always trying to set it so the ball would slip out of her hands. And she just wasn't very confident in general. But we made it a point to constantly work on it because in practice, it's very easy to only work on your, the, your strengths because it makes you feel good. Like if I'm good at, Pass with my platform on the right side. Usually, people are going to keep working on it because it makes you feel good, but that doesn't make you any better. The only way you get better is by working at things you're not good at. So, we spend a lot of time chest passing to her face so she just gets lots of reps and habits of just pushing the ball up. We also do strength and conditioning. We do push ups, we do shoulder presses, any type of pushing motion to help strengthen her deltoids, her upper pecs, her triceps, her wrist, her fingers. And when we needed her the most to just dig all these high balls, she dialed in and she had an amazing passing performance. Now, I'm not going to tell you the result of this game until episode 10 because I'm really hoping that the result of episode 10 is identical to the result of our game on Wednesday because that would just be a beautiful story with even more Moreau Catholic girls' volleyball footage that I can incorporate into this reaction videos. Stay tuned for that, and we'll see you in the next video.